All right, you guys, so we're out here now with our buddy Paul Hamilton uh, out in Lucknow, Ontario, and we're at his yard at the moment where he's got a bunch of the logs, uh, but he's gonna take us around to some of the Amish who cut, dry, and sand a lot of this wood for him, and it should be a pretty cool experience to see the way that they do things. So we're gonna go sniff through some logs right now, pick out what we like, and then it'll be off to the first sawmill. Oh, come on. Well, that's not a walnut, what is that? That's a maple. You can the white, when it goes white like that, that's a maple. Beautiful. Probably. Man, this bark is just like falling off. <laughs> like this is the heaviest log we've ever lifted with that fork. It is. It's so it on its nose. And this moves good too. Coffee table, small. Coffee table, table, even. Yeah. Like these look like ten quarter. We're putting a proper rack. I think they are. Yeah. Yeah, they're ten. Like those are those are beauties. Those would move. That's got a little bit of curl on the body. That's right? walnut too, isn't it? Yeah, look I at the bark. Yeah. Oh, Actually, I think Paul might be, like, this bark is different than this bark. Is it? This might be a butternut log, and then this could be oh, your Christ, walnut down there. The curl right here. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, this sawmill actually is made right local. Uh, Old Order Mennonite makes them. People order them from all over the world and he's ranked as one of the best sawmill manufacturers in the world. And then basically coming from two, three blocks from here. <laughs> That's relatively new. You can do up to 32, 33 inches in width on that one. But this guy's actually manufactured ones that we use as well for black forest wood, mm -hmm. up to six feet in width. So pretty talented. The Amish that we're going to see can't. They can't have high growth. They have to rig up, and they're all different the way they rig up their lift trucks because they can't use gas. Like they can't have a, a car or a truck. They can't use gas or anything. They can use gas in places, like the motor for that, they can use it. Like that's at Jonai. His shop was run off the diesel. That's right. right? That's right. And right? it's all shafts. Yeah. And uh, they just have ways of manufacturing stuff like crazy. Yeah. Well, you guys, I'll tell you, this is pretty exciting. We're just in the, the land of walnut logs here right now, just admiring the whole uh, environment, the area. They've got their mill set up. Uh, it doesn't run on electricity, so that's the absolutely intriguing whole aspect of our, our trip here. I could build at least three extra pieces of walnuts. <laughs> Maybe four. Maybe four. All the okay, so this is another Mennonite mill we're at. They only cut, I guess, three days of the week, and they don't like being on camera, so there's no one here right now, but that gives us the opportunity to be here. And behind me, this is all ash, and like an unbelievable amount of ash. There's ash here, there's ash there, there's ash all over the place here. And it's been explained to me the reason why there's so much is that there's the ash boring beetle causes this disease in the ash tree so every single one of these ash trees here has these beetle tracks all in the edge of it and that's caused by the ash boring beetle and it's completely spread around here killing most of the ash trees and all of the sawyers have been ordered to cut them down as quick as they can because they're all going to die so ash sadly is not going to be commercially available for much longer but for this short window of time there's going to be a giant excess of ash material so we're going to try and get our hands on as much of this as we can but it's it's kind of sad because it's one of our favorite woods to work with okay so here we are on the inside where all that ash is and all of this machinery all of this setup is custom made by them so you know saw setups like this you're not just going to home depot and buying this kind of saw they built Every single piece of equipment you see in here. This is the equivalent to our crosscut roughing saw we have at the shop. I think we should upgrade. I think we should. The blade's <laughs> probably five inches bigger than ours. Yeah. Start cutting some 20 quarter. Yeah. You know, maybe isn't up to OSHA standards, but it works. And they produce all of the lumber that you're seeing cut here is done with this setup. Here's a bandsaw. My dad said this is kind of like an amusement park ride. You know, you get to sit right here, logs are right in your face. You get all the controls on the joystick. It looks like it would be very scary. I, I can't say I would actually want to operate this thing. 
This, this is actually crazy, I didn't notice this. This tractor, this is an old tractor that they have customized to connect to their planer. So when they want to plane wood, they turn on their tractor and then it runs their planer. Pretty neat. And then similarly over here on a much smaller scale, here's a little Honda, like a little chainsaw motor, something like that. Just a small little Honda engine that powers this lift because they can't use electricity. Normally this probably would have been electric, but they tear the batteries off because they can't charge them and they can have this motor. So that's, that's incredible. I, I can't believe that, that I didn't notice the tractor powering the, the planet. That is too cool. All right, so this is gonna be short, everyone, because it's extremely hot in here, but we're in the kiln where all of our Canadian black walnut gets dried. Um, all of the material that you guys buy from us, if you buy charcuterie stock, if you buy our rustic walnut, or if you have a table made out of the Canadian black walnut, this is the kiln that's dried it. Uh, there's a man here named Louis. You know, just to respect their culture, we can't have him on camera, but he's rigged this whole setup. Okay, so this is where we just came out of. This is the kiln in here where all that wood is stored. And then it's pretty neat the way it's ran. So over here, we've got the big wood burner. Essentially what this is, there's a box in here that's burning all of this wood. Uh, all of this stuff is what's getting fed into there. And it's surrounded by water, which then circulates the water through these tubes. It's not steam, it just circulates water. And then there's a return valve, you can see down there, a return pipe. And all of that hot air in there is then pushed with a fan that's ran by a diesel motor. Okay, so that was the kiln over there that we looked in, and then here's the wood shop. He's, he's got his garage set up here, you know, the carriages. Um, note, wooden wheels, no rubber allowed, so these are wooden wheels on here. And if you peek back in the corner, there's a diesel back there that goes through the wall. And then if we head inside here, this is the wood shop run off a diesel engine. So it's not very big, but you can see starting in that back corner, there is a shaft that goes all the way along the outside of this shop. So it's powering his planer, it's powering his dust collector, uh, his one of his sanders, and then also this sander here, all powered by that diesel, which again, amazing. Normally we'd be running all this off electricity and these guys have completely modified every machine in here. To, oh, they're cheating. I found electricity. That's not running off the diesel. Doesn't doesn't count. <laughs> oh, nice. Oh, very nice. And it's crazy. So there's this here, and then there's our wood being dried on the other side of that wall. Like. <laughs> they see the cock. Look at the cock. <laughs> We are here at William Woodwright. They are a supplier for all our pen kits, all our pen tools that we're using for our pen class. We're about to go see what they have in store right now. Oh, so it's, it's nice. done by category, but it's also done numerically. So they go through and they cross-reference what's labeled with the SKU, and they pick it. And yep. then it comes down the line here. And then when all the girls are in, which is the beginning of the week, it's always busier at the beginning of the week, yeah. we have the four girls here. And they're basically cross-checking to make sure it's always completely accurate and we don't make any packing mistakes. And then it gets packed and it goes to our ship station up here. And yeah. that gets shipped out. So for the most part, we have things shipped the day that they're placed. Yeah. Unless it's over the weekend, because we're, we're closed on the weekend. Yeah. But for the most part, we have like the same day shipping, yeah. which people, Really like. Yeah, <laughs> they really like. That. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Some there we go. Mike. <laughs> yeah. Mike oh, there you go. Mike. There we go. Oh, it's My wife was teasing me. I bought her mugs the last couple places that we went. Right? Yeah. <laughs> she said, "I don't need any more mugs." I know. Yes, you do. Perfect. <laughs> She's gonna love this. Right? <laughs> it's too big for her hand, right? It's too big yeah, for her hand. So she likes it. a small yeah. cup. Uh, this is all stabilized. Okay. Yeah, this is uh, knife blanks. Yeah, knife blocks. Yeah. I got a whole aisle. The yeah, there's a whole aisle. Oh, there's acrylics, acetate here. These are polyesters. What's the difference? So it's a different type of plastic. Uh, these are really easy to work with. Those they're more difficult to work with. They're beautiful. A lot of it's textile. 
texture too. So these ones you can actually see they're matte or like almost ceramic, like satin looking yeah. compared to something like acrylic acetate, which is like hyper, hyper glossy. Yeah. 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 Okay. So that's a big difference. But you mentioned your classes. I would always go acrylic acetate over so polyurethane. So does it string off like epoxy in one it solid does. strand? It does. Yep. Okay. Yep. Is soft. there a way around yeah. it building up on there and just spinning or do you just have to stop the lathe, pull it off? You just have to pull it off. Okay. Yeah. Sounds good. Yeah. Like we're thinking we'll start with just like wood for the first class, maybe do an advanced class where I could teach a super glue finish, do a polyacetate, yep. let them do the polyacetate yeah. and stuff like that. Uh, this stuff, you don't want to do a CA finish. Just polish it up to like 5,000. Yeah. Too. Yep. That's gorgeous. Yeah. You know what finishes on this guy? That is Pence Plus, I believe. The one that I'm gonna send you. All right. Everybody used to always do CA for years and years and years, like since we learned. Yeah. And now all of us use Pence Plus. Yeah. All of us. Yeah, we love it. And it keeps selling out over and over. So I are these kits you're bringing for. in or kits you're creating? We're created. bringing in, we're gonna bring those ones in. And it's oil-based, hey? Pence Plus is- Walnut oil-based, yeah. Walnut so oil -based. it's a blend walnut oil, shellac, and Micro aggregated micro crystal wax. <laughs> okay, whatever whatever that means. She did a video, so that was by script. Yeah. Yeah. It's, a, it's an alternative card for carnauba wax. So okay. it's, it's fingerprint and water resistant. That's okay. why they choose that. That's yeah. why it's the pens plus version, because yeah. you're obviously handling it. So it's similar to like some of the hard wax oils, I yeah. guess, and that it dries harder than your traditional. Yeah. 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 And it's one of the it's high friction, so you can instantly dry it. Yep, just with heat. Yeah. Perfect. That, yeah. that, yeah, works. that was my only fear to the super glue finishes. Everyone's going to need a mask. Everyone's going to need like a safety yes. section, yes. right? It takes so much longer, too. Yeah, and it's, it yeah. does. Hard. It's, it's, hard it's easy to, to mess up. up. It's really yeah. easy to mess yeah. up. Well, yeah. Yeah. yeah, so all of the stuff that we manufacture or we design, we try to do it in a lot of cooler platings. The satins, the two tone platings, yeah. purple, green, yeah. red, blue titanium, those kinds of things because we Same. notice everything it's else gorgeous. is offered in three colors, yeah. which is like gold, gunmetal, and chrome. And yeah. then everybody else seems to stop there. Yeah. So we're trying to get some like really funky. That's one of the Robins in. there, Fast and Powers. Okay, so next stop now, we're here at SCM. And this is where we're getting that big 54 inch helical planer sander machine from. And we also have a 25 inch helical planer that's sitting at our shop right now. It's actually arrived while we've been out here. So as soon as we're back in Calgary, we're gonna unbox this. But first, let's go tour SCM. Okay, look at this stuff. Our, yeah. our primary industry is the kitchen manufacturing. Yeah. Right? Yeah. We, we have a whole solid wood uh, side of the business mm -hmm. where we can get into bigger, higher Z axis and do all of that. But that's why what you'll see here is really panel processing or to a certain dimension, solid wood yeah. machining we can yeah. start yeah. to get to here yeah and then it becomes the conversation and discussion you said no 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 i do blocks like this yeah okay cool i'm not gonna have it here but we can do that but you can make yeah. it yeah that's where we usually come in problems with this our second head which it looks like you guys have one too it's a drill head the drill head right? yeah when we're cutting pieces tall enough with our compression bit we'll actually smack into our piece with the drill head and you're exactly right because it depends how that head is mounted so on a simpler three axis machine you're going to end up with both of those in the same uh on the on the same mounting yeah here we're independent nice. so we can actually raise the drill block out of the way and, just and the drills are, are extracted as well so we're gonna we're gonna alternate right Sweet. okay so we want a virtual no tool change your yeah. four main heads yeah but it's production and repeatability. Yeah. It can take an hour to set up the jig yeah. for those pieces. Yeah. So if you do 5,000 of the same thing, yeah. that's cool. Yeah. Yeah. We refer to this as a professional home hobbyist line. Yeah. Yeah. So it's not a DeWalt, it's not, it's, no, it's, no, at, a, no, it's no, at a whole no. different level, but yeah. nobody even knows where to go looking for this. They don't even yeah. know it exists until yeah way you know sometimes way too late right yeah our rotor bits that we do the chamfers and roundovers that's right here it's a literal panel saw table saw shaper slash rotor going to a planer all in one okay well what do we got here dylan it looks like it's a class s 630 something yes this is our new toy from scm we've got a brand new planer to go right here we've cleared out the spot and funny enough it's going beside our old scm planer that thing's what 25 30 years old it's about 25 years old yeah so it still runs like a dream 
and we're now going to be comparing the brand new technology made in Italy and we're just super excited to be getting this quality of tool in our shop. Yeah, we cannot wait. So no manual crank at all, hey? All digital? Yeah. It's like the inside is identical to the other guy. Yeah. Oh, we have to wash the whole thing down. That's weird. Crazy that this isn't even the top of the line. Maybe, maybe they ship like five euros. <laughs> That's a tight. Is your box of goodies? Actually, the cleaner, so we can clean the, up the machine with yeah. brass brushes to clean. Our yeah. new Class S630 planer is all set up from SCM, and sitting right next to it is the old SCM that's about 25 years old. So we've got the brand new next to the old, and we'll have some fun doing some comparison videos here coming up soon.